Hello YouTube, this is Vika. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some exposing again. And uh, today I'm going to expose the Black Hebrew Israelites booth band. But before I begin, that sacred prayer. I uh, thank God, thank for my patience. Thank for this day. Uh, thank, for, uh, thank for giving us your clear word. Thank for allowing us to see what it says. And uh, Lord, I ask you to please help me explain what the Bible teaches. I give you praise, honor, and glory for all these things. And Jesus never pray about. Now, I was looking at a couple of their videos on YouTube, and basically what I saw, according to their test, uh, based on their testimonies, you could clearly see, I could clearly see that these people are not being led by the Spirit of God. These people are not being led by the Spirit of God. They're being led by their flesh. And, um, and I want to expose, I don't want to expose it today. I'm going to give you five reasons why. But first, I want to ask you these questions right here. The first question is, do these people present the clear gospel message of Jesus Christ? No, they don't. But what is the gospel? According to 1 Corinthians chapter, uh, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4, the gospel message is the, is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, according to the scriptures. But these people, they're not preaching the gospel message of Jesus Christ. They're preaching another gospel. And the Bible tells us in, the Bible tells us in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8, if there is anybody preaching another gospel, if anybody preaches another gospel that which, which we have not received, let them be a curse. <coughs> and that's exactly what these people are doing. They're preaching another gospel. Not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the death, burial, and resurrection of him. And question number two. Question number two. Do these do, uh, do they worship the Jesus of the Bible? Do these people worship the Jesus of the Bible? No. They worship another Jesus. According to first, uh, according to Second Corinthians chapter 11. Let me see. According to first Corinthians, not first Corinthians, according to second Corinthians chapter learning verse three, it says, But I fear lest by any means that the serpent beguile Eve through his subtlety. So uh, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For he that cometh preacheth another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if he received another spirit which he hath not received, or that the gospel which he hath not accepted you might well bear with him. So these people, they do not worship the, the Jesus of the Bible. I mean, they claim, they claim they do, but obviously they don't. They worship this other Jesus, which is the so-called black man that they call it. Uh, their Jesus is a kind of black man that cannot save people from their sins, that cannot give eternal life to anyone who simply believes on him. But, but this Jesus that they worship, demands them to uh, to keep the laws, keep the commandments and all that stuff. But that's not the kind of Jesus. If that was to be the case, then he is not your savior. But I don't worship that teaches. I worship the Jesus of the Bible that worship that, that gives people eternal life to, that gives, it, that gives eternal life to Abel who simply puts their trust in him with all. Period. Uh, question number three. Are these people under grace? No, no they're not. These people are not under grace. They are under the curse of the law. According to uh, Galatians. According to, Gal according to Galatians chapter 3. Let me see if I can turn there. Galatians chapter 3. It says in verse 10. For as many as out of the works of the law are under a curse, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things, which are written in the book of the law to do them. But no man is justified by, by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, let me read verse 12 again, and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. 
these people who is not justified by the law are under the are under the curse. And it's very sad that these people are living by the law because they are justified by the law. And that brings to uh, 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 question number four, where it says, are these people justified by faith? Like I said, no, they're not justified by faith. They're justified by the law. And second, uh, not second, but Galatians chapter, uh, Galatians chapter 2, it says in verse 16, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we believe, uh, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law. You see that? For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. Let me show you another scripture. Uh, let me see. And, and the, the, the other, so the reason why these people are not justified by the law, or not justified by faith, is because they 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 teach that you gotta keep the law, you gotta keep the commandments, which nobody cannot. Because uh, 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 the last time I checked, the the laws of uh, the law of Moses that they say they gotta do, you gotta keep the law of Moses or the laws of God. I think there are, are six hundred thirteen of them. But you know what? Nobody cannot do that because why? Because we are sinners by we are sinners by nature. According to uh Romans chapter three verse twenty three, it tells us for all has sinned and come short of the glory of God. So nobody cannot keep the law. But you know what? Jesus Christ, he came down here and fulfilled the law. Because you know, if we were to fulfill the law ourselves, then Jesus Christ would have died in vain. Jesus Christ would have died in vain if we were to keep the law ourselves. But God knows that nobody cannot keep the law. But you know what? According to the Bible, the laws of God was there. The, 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 the reason why the laws of God was there in the first place was to, sh was to show us that we're in the desperate need of a Savior. Because it says in uh, Galatians chapter 3, verse, uh, let me see. Uh, verse 25 it says but after that faith has come but after that faith has come we are no longer under the schoolmaster for ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ and there is not a Jew nor Greek there is not a bond nor free there is not a male nor female for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Let me see. Now, let me go back to verse 24. Let me see. No, actually, uh, let me see. Go back to verse 20, 22. Let me go back to verse 22. Or verse 21. Is, is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law uh, given which could have been given, fairly righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture had concluded all under sin, that the powers by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we are kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster, to bring us unto Christ, the, that we might be justified by faith. So the purpose of the law being there in the first place was to bring us, uh, to, was to bring us to Jesus Christ by faith, by simply putting our trust in Jesus Christ because of what He has done. Because, like I said before, God knows that nobody cannot fulfill the law, but the only one who can is Jesus Christ, and that's the reason why Jesus Christ had to die on the cross. To save people from their sins, and to give and to give eternal life to anyone who simply who simply puts their trust in Him alone. Oh yeah, one more thing. Let me show you another script. Uh, let me show you another scripture. Let me see. Uh, of course, it's name. 
or let me read to you, uh, let me read you another scripture where it says in uh, Galatians chapter 2 verse, uh, verse 21 it says, I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain, period. Oh yeah, let me show you, let me show you another scripture. Uh, I believe it's Romans chapter 8. No, I think it's Romans chapter 8 or first or chapter 10, I believe. Romans chapter 10. Uh, Romans chapter 10, uh, verse 3. This is Christ's people who's, who's, who keeps on teaching that you got to keep the law or obey the law or keep the commandments. This is Christ's stand right here. Uh, Romans chapter 10 verse 3 it says for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God so why are these people being ignorant it's because they're going about to establish their own righteousness and the reason why they do that is because they have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God verse 4 it says for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. Amen to that. Let me read that again. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to every one that believeth. So anyone who believes on Jesus Christ, Christ is the end of the law for them. Because nobody can fulfill the law. And that's like I said. Jesus Christ, He came and fulfilled the law for us. He did that in our place. He did that in our place. Why? Because, like I said before, God, God knows that nobody, not even myself, is capable enough to to fulfill the law. But we're not God. We're just we're just born a sinner, just like everybody else in this world. We was born a sinner, according to Romans three verse twenty three. All right. Last question. Number five, do they believe or teach that Jesus died for everybody? Uh, according, according to them, uh, according to them, they teach they teach that Christ did not die for everybody. Well, according to the Bible scriptures, Jesus did die for everybody. How's that so? Jesus saying John three for uh, Jesus saying John three for sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever you see that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen to that. And and now that that it also says in First John, in First John chapter two, where it says. First uh, John chapter two, where it says in verse two, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. You see that? So Jesus Christ, so Jesus Christ did die for everybody. But those that say they, but those that say that Jesus did not die for everybody, they're they're preaching another gospel. They're worshiping a false Jesus. And they're preaching a false gospel, which, and they're preaching a false gospel, which we have now accepted. And you, and you know what the sad, tragic thing is? These people, uh, these people, they are just like the scribes and Pharisees back in Jesus' day. And Jesus was able to expose the scribes and Pharisees back in his day. Why? Because, because he was able to uh, reveal the hypocrisy. Uh, Jesus knew their hypocrisy and he was able to expose them for that. As a matter of fact, let me show you right now. I think it's in the book of Matthew chapter 23, I believe. Uh, let me see. Yeah, Matthew chapter 23, I believe. It says in, uh, yeah, uh, verse 13. It says, But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against me. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering, into, that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! 
for ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer, therefore ye shall receive greater damnation. Or war unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye compare sea and land to make one proselyte, and when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Okay, what else? Okay, first, let me see, hold on. Where is this? Oh, okay, verse 27, it says, Woe well, unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whitest sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but are within full of dead man's bones, and of all uncleanness. Verse 27, Even, even so ye also outwardly appear whitest unto man, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. So these people, these people right here, that the they pretend to be the, uh, they pretend to be the, uh, uh, how how you describe it? the apostles of Christ. They pretend to be the apostles of Christ or God's apostles. But these people are self-righteous hypocrites, according to Jesus. These people, these people are self-righteous hypocrites. The scribes and Pharisees, they the reason why he was able to expose them because they was they was practicing. They was teaching hypocrisy, thinking that they could keep the laws, which they couldn't keep. And since Jesus was able, to be, and since Jesus was able to expose them because of that, of course they was angry. Of course they was angry. They wanted to put him to, they wanted to put him to death, because they want Jesus to continue to expose them any longer, because they know that is the truth, and the truth hurts them. But they don't want to go by the truth. They want to go by all these lies that they have been told. Because the, according to the Bible scriptures, Satan has blinded them to the truth. Satan wanted to believe a lie. With, and that's the exactly second what is happening to these these so-called black Hebrew Israelites. They're preaching. They're, they're, they're trying to teach lies, 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 and lies. Not the, not the true message that came from Jesus Christ. Not the true biblical message that that people should live by faith and not by the and not by the keeping the laws of God, loving, uh, keeping the laws of Moses and all that, because these things cannot do any good. The only, the only time a person is justified is by faith, by simply believing what Jesus did for them, and therefore these people are saved by grace, because the Bible tells us in in, in Galatians chapter two verse eight. No, Exodus, it actually says in uh, Ephesians chapter two verse eight. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So if any, so if any person teaches, if anybody says that a person must keep the laws and keep the commandments, instead of keeping, instead of keeping the, instead of keeping the teachings of Jesus Christ, which is by simply putting or trusting Him alone, and teaching grace. If anybody treats any other gospel unto you, we should avoid these kind of people because these people are teaching damnable heresies and they are wolf in sheep's clothing and we should flee from them. And and that's pretty much all I had there goes in prayer. Dear God, thanks for allowing me to preach this. Thanks for allowing me to explain what your word says. Lord, I pray, I pray that you, you'll be able to open the eyes of uh, a certain individual who is part of that group I hope I pray that you uh, open that person's eyes and 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 get them to realize that what they are actually doing is is not is not good, it's not pleasant in the sight of you. I pray that you help them uh, realize and understand the real truth, and, and come out of this false teaching, and come out of the false doctrine that he has been led to. And Lord, I give you praise on the Lord for these things. Uh, I also pray that you uh. Help my brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus to not to be fall for this deception, not fall for this garbage, being lied to by this, all this false teaching that's being taught by the wolf in sheep's clothing and false prophets. Uh, I pray that you help them get out of that mess. So I give you praise on and glory for all these things. Uh, bless the sermon in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen.